Oh, no, I'm not hearing. There? Can you hear me now? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, get into this thing. And I'll figure out why the, um, the iPad is. Okay. So, how was it with the minister for the uh, it was really for a whole day, you know, but it was it was a good experience. Um, we had some previous conversations before uh, regarding the small ruminant industry. I remember when we had, a, we had a case alumni meeting where we kind of called the minister in to kind of show them what is it that um, as the Old Farmers Association, what are some of the agendas we think you should focus on. So I went to that presentation you now focusing on feed security. Um, animal feed security, because I think as a nutritionist, that was, that's an important part, you know, for production, you know, protein consumption is a big thing that make you a first world country, if you check it out. So within that presentation, he was asking for winners, you know, what, what are the winning livestock sectors that he could focus on and have some kind of impact. And, you know, for me, it's small yeah. ruminants. So that is where that whole conversation starts after is like, hey, I really like your presentation. I see you put a lot of work into it. Um, let us discuss what, what is it that we can do to kind of make some changes in the game. So I think that is where it started really with, with you know, with the minister or kind of, we engaging the minister from that, from that angle. And what I can, what I'm proud of is that he actually listened and, you know, he kind of called me up and said, Hey, I need your guidance and let us see what we can do. And that's, that's, that's how it is. That's, that's where it started. So to actually have him, you know, zoom in on livestock. Um, mm -hmm. And pick, picking small ruminants as a winner, I think is a win-win. Eh? We've been doing this for years, Ray. If you remember, um, we started from that CFC project. And yeah. When I was in Israel, from Israel days, you're like, yo, I'm coming home. And, you know, it's about five, six years of us trying to make this be something that we can talk about. And we're getting, you know, we're getting rewarded for that right now. So. Well, I was yeah, hoping. I... Uh... I was excited to see, you know, you on that platform, on that stage. I was, you know, really, you can tell I was in there dropping my comments and, you know, trying yes. to engage to make sure and share with everybody because I think to have somebody who is in the trenches with us from, especially for Cabra Ranch from day one, had to see you on that stage sharing your views and you know, the Minister of Agriculture taking your view seriously and ask you to be there, I think it was a big deal, you know what yeah. I mean? And I wanted everybody to see it, to know that somebody that they have access to, that person have access to decision makers, you know what I mean? And for what it's worth, I did ask um, Minister Floyd Green to be a part of tonight's show he said he's in a country with unreliable internet, so he's not sure if he can join. I sent him the information in, the, if, in any case. If he can join, I tell him just jump in and, you know, if it's even for five, ten minutes, I'm sure Small Ruminants community would love to engage with them and have, uh, you know, even if it's a short discussion with him or just give him the, the, the chance to say something. And then a later date, we can schedule something where where he's in a position to to engage for a longer period. So I don't know if he's gonna join us. I'm not sure, but um, if he does, as usual, he's welcome to you know let us know how important this sector is to his agenda. Yes, yes. So all right. So this whole show tonight is about the takeaways from. His presentation you know what i mean i don't know how many people watched it but i was glued to it because i want to know if there's anything coming down the pipeline that affects what we're trying to do here at cover or the smart room in a sector on a whole you know i'm engaging agriculture activities overall you know because on a larger scale we're trying to do like a csa and all that stuff 
thing that happens in the agriculture sector will eventually affect us. However, at this moment, the major contribution we're making is on the small ruminants side of things. So I wanted to hear what was coming for small ruminants. Number one thing that jumped out at me and I screen grabbed it and, and posted it right away was the program of giving away um, human and embryo transfer services and the actual semen and and embryos to three to farmers i think three each he said registered farmers so i assume registered mean registered with rada uh, highly likely is registered with rada or probably if you register with an association i think they will take that yeah. into consideration or probably even as a registered business so if cover ranch is registered as a, a goat farm I don't see why that would not meet the criteria um, of getting access. But let me, let me talk about this a little bit more. It's not the first time, you know, the government or projects, you know, have done something like this. Um, the FBO project, I think, probably in 2000 or 2000, I don't remember that time. Um, they did AI across the island for farmers. Yeah. Um, the CFC project that we did, um, that was like a couple of years ago, 2015, we brought in embryos and we did it at Bodles, but the aim for that was not to distribute it to the farmers at discounted rate, live animals. I think you could get a, a purebred sheep for $25,000. You could get a purebred goat for $25,000 at that time. And then if you're in a group, you had access to about four females and one male. So these are not new schemes that the government has tried over the time. Um, I must give kudos to them for that because if it wasn't for these projects, we would not have the type of genetic quality we have out there. Don't let anybody fool you. Few farmers made their, their, their level of investment into bringing in live animals or bringing in semen for themselves or even embryo transfer. I can tell you, probably the first embryo transfer ever done in Jamaica was done by Sir Kenneth King. He privately brought in embryos from Canada and had it done here. And we're talking way back. So, you know... I think what is happening now is just again is that re-emergence. And my problem is that I don't want us to, you know, have the same fallout like what we had back in the days where it just came to a rise and then it dip. And now we're having this rise again because you know, it's, it's trending. So I hope we can have a different approach, you know, something more systematic, strategic, and you know, we can really have more impact than what we had before in the past. That that's that's where we want us to start. Well, for my take is, number one, I don't like the idea of free. You know um, what I mean? I get, I get you. And, and that's what we did with the CFC project. That's why we weren't giving out these animals for free. We were saying farmers need to see that there was some farmer investment in people. We give that a subsidized price of $25,000. In this case, I think, I think, I really think if, I really think the strategy might have to change. Um, but I understand why they want to give. Because now you have, if you have more farmers getting access to this, you can kind of hope that some farmers will take this and you know grow the stock into the right direction, especially some of the younger farmers. Some younger farmers might cannot afford AI or embryo transfer service. They're just not at that capacity. But you could give them a start to say, hey, you know, you have some quality animals coming in. But then again, what, what, I, what, I, what I think is important, I think, is the connection that they're trying to do. It's not only that they're giving away semen and embryos, but they want to hold this now with the, with the registry. And I think that is where these two in combination can really change the game. If we now yeah. can say, go in and say, all right, we give you free semen, give you free embryos. But at the same time, we start with registration around this whole artificial insemination program. Then we can start looking at quantifying our genetics properly. And I think this, where we're talking about how this registry may work for the big man and that type of notion will kind of change because it will be a little bit more transparent and everybody get a chance to get access to purebred genetics now where we can come back on your farm later than if the AI or embryo transfer is successful and say, hey, all right, this person have close to purebred stock or him have close to graded stock and the registry can build on a system like that. Um, you know, I'm hoping that it could be live animals as I think if we could bring in um, breeding females that would be much better for the country. But we know the past of we bringing in live animals and having to kill all of them because of you know disease and so on, the whole scrape, etc. So 
I just think it, it's ticklish, but I hope if we do it strategically, we can get some benefits out of it. That's that's how I personally see this. It's well, I did, I did post that question to him about um, importing animals yesterday. Yeah, yeah sorry. Question yeah, answer. And he explained what their position on importing live animals, and I understand it. But on the other hand, it's 2021. Got to have some form of, you know, technology or advancement in our screening to to be able to litigate against any major disease coming into the into the country. You know, what I mean, live animals coming in is an important part of growing this. The, the, I, I agree with you. I agree. I agree yeah. that we have to get to what I've heard. We have to. Yeah. We have to, we figure, have it to it. figure it out. You know, what yeah. I mean, and so I I understand position but i think there's got to be a way to make it happen well 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 i think that's probably no where then we have probably the private sector is what they have to kind of take up that mantle the government might be sitting on, on a on a on a fix for now and probably the easiest way for them to do it is just you know do this because as i said the past has proven that we could get this done the cfc yeah. project proved that we could bring embryos we could flush our own animal, but the technical expertise out here, we could put them in animals, we have offspring that we could distribute it to farmers. So it's a model that worked in the past. So, you know, the, the, the live animal model was a problem. You get what I'm saying? Yes. When COVID, we were putting all these animals and we had to kill our 50 animals, it was a significant loss to the government project. So I'm probably looking at that to say, boy, we don't want to make that mistake, you know, because it will come back around and bite us. And I think they're leaving that probably now to the private sector to take up that mantle and put everything in place and see how, how we can how we can get that done. So yeah. well, that's where it is. Well, you know, uh, we'll see where it goes. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And if you find this conversation and discussion valuable, please share with your friends and anybody you know is a farmer because we're gonna to try to dig into this presentation. Who didn't watch it? I suggest you find it on YouTube or somewhere and watch it. I think he posted it on YouTube. And yes, so, yeah. yeah, so you should watch it because it affects what you do as a farmer. It affects what's coming in, it let you know what's coming in the pipeline, how you can take advantage of what he has coming and what part you play, you know? And for us, you know, Kali you know this, knowledge is power. If you don't know what's available to you, the opportunities available to you, they will pass you by. Yes, so for man. us, like, you have to be engaged in this stuff. Um, share, like, share, and let people know we're having this discussion. Let's, I'm going to dig into the whole giving away the semen and embryo transfer for free. Mm -hmm. One, I think, and you guys can tell me in the comment, if you disagree with me, I will debate it. Will Khalil give me his point of view, and we can take you know, people's point of view are open it up. Um, when we give away stuff, there's no value to the person in my, like, my grandmother always said, easy come, easy go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this is what, this is how I see it working. If you're going to say, okay, farmer, you can qualify for three semen straws, or uh, three embryo transfers. However, you have to have X, Y, Z in place. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's register with rather, register your farm as a business, you got to have X amount of goats. The mm -hmm. only way it happens is if our approved vet veterinarian comes to the facility mm -hmm. and approve of the facility, approve of the animals, help you get the animals ready, then we can do this. You know what I mean? Outside of that, you're going to be taking two step forward, three step back. Because if you're giving things to people that they don't know how to take care of it and how yes. to get the success out of it, then we're right back to where those animals that we're giving away to start pilot projects end up in Curry Park and end up at night night from people plate and them things. That's exactly what's going to happen is, you know, those animals are not going to improve our situation there's not you're not going to see that growth i i agree with you 100 percent. and when he when he explains his big picture of jamaica playing a major part in the region when it comes to export of animals and all that stuff and developing our own stock 
and the breed of animals, we cannot get there if if all this semen and embryo transfer is going to waste. I, I agree with you. Um, but I think one, one I think it, it, what you're saying is perfect. And I believe that they have to have some criteria. And I think it will be Dr. Watson who will be leaving, leading this project, who is you know, the, the chief veterinary mm -hmm. officer of the BSD. I am sure with, with his mindset, farmers will have to have to meet up to some standard, which is, which is going to be the reality of the situation. But again, the issue of you know, the whole big man notion, um, some farmers just might not be able to meet that standard. And some of these farmers might be the ones who really and truly need that genetic improvement. So how is it we kind of find a way? For example, say Oshin, mm -hmm. you know, young Oshin, 14 year, 16 year old Oshin who just starting up. I would love for Oshin to benefit. But let's be honest, Oshin might not have you know, the right know-how as yet to kind of get that. How we can factor in some of these youths into the into that system is it that we might have to take a step back and then look at now to say boy oh, we give lead farmers and lead farmers need to give offsprings to that we have tried that system before and it has failed so again it is a very ticklish situation that we deal with but again you're right in the limit, and i think that's the only way forward if we really want it to be sustainable i agree with you yeah, let's leave, let's use Oshin as an example because he's in our community. He's active in our in our space. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, and he's making it clear that he wants to be successful at this. Yes. If Oshin's facility and his thing is not to the standard where you know an embryo transfer or a semen implant is is most likely not going to be successful. It's up to the advisors and the technical support to get him up to that standard mm -hmm. and say, yo, O'Shane, right now you're not ready. It doesn't mean you're losing your opportunity. We're going to help you get to where you need to be so we can do these things for you. So if it takes six months and if it takes a year for O'Shane to get there, he's not losing out. He's mm -hmm. just preparing himself for success. Yes, yes, it don't yes, make yes. no sense just give it to Oshin because Oshin is a youth and it's a good publicity look, it's a good mm -hmm. photo app or whatever, but nothing comes of it. What's more important is if you get Oshin up to the level, teach him yeah, how yeah. this work, how to flush mm -hmm. an animal, how to, what need to look out for, go through a whole breeding process with them. I said, this is what you need to do in order for us to put this major uh, investment yes, in mm -hmm. your in your your enterprise mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and he will end up having success from it and can testify yo this thing is working but just saying yo ocean want see men in a top board we might look on them something there. and then you just go give him go put it in i'm in in an animal because your promise that you will do that for farm registered farmers it's not gonna help yeah, that's I my agree. humble opinion no, I, I agree. As in, we, we've seen it. We have tried this before, yeah. and it it has to be. I've, I'm sure that they will develop criteria for this. I really don't think it's going to be that that we need it because the government has learned from the past from doing this type of stuff. So I expect that. But then, but then, you know, as farmers too, I think you know the, the talk of unity, and I think that is where if we are collectively looking at this industry, the right way to commercialize it. We should probably look at look at say, the minister and say, hey, this approach sounds good, but let us try to be a little bit more systematic, you know, through the association or something. And we we, we group up and like, for example, at Oshin, you know, we could probably take animals that Oshin have, say, for Cabra Ranch. You know, I can host the three animals for you throughout this entire period. Mm -hmm. It's some of these things don't have to come in place, but I think the farmers would have to be the one to kind of suggest that. To say, boy, we are willing to do this for the sector. We're willing to bring up young Jeremian. We're willing to bring up, you know, young, young, young Oshin by assisting him in that kind of way. And I hope that is the approach some of the farmers then take going forward with this program because it's it's going to happen. But it's how we make this really be beneficial to the sector. That's yeah, yeah. It, it definitely it's a big move, and I want it to succeed. But I do not want it to fall apart three years down the road when the hype is gone. We don't yeah. see the, the growth. We don't see the benefit of it. You know what I mean? That's not what I that's not what I'm endorsing. I'm endorsing the fact that it's a big move. It can work if it's implemented 
the right way and not just right given way. not just given to a far because he's registered and he's there and you know what I mean and an MP you have a link with an MP and all of them something there and then I think I think that part is something that we 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 I think it's hard for us to get over the whole politics or some of these things and we can't we can't get into that but let us no. say how oh, 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 how is it that you know the core group of who is serious about it can can make some of these game changing um, um, decisions when this happen? But you know, you know, politics is something that it's real. Yeah, and I don't want to get into the politics of it. Yeah. I want to yeah. get into the fundamentals of how we get success. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really don't care about the politics of it. I care about what are the steps, what are the the, the, the things that we can do to ensure a certain level of success. You know what I mean? That is a major thing. And I think when he put that out there, I was like, whoa, this is big. Let's hope it can happen in a systematic way that leads to success. You know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. yo, if he makes it happen and it works, a big thing's for him. Big no, thing's for, think, for his agenda. I think it will work if we assist that process. As in, what we're doing now, talking about it, to hash it out, um, to kind of look at how it can work, is how we kind of, you know, you probably watch it, or you know, you might call me and ask me, Kali, you know, give me a, give me a strategy, and we can, we can, you know, kind of put these same, you know, concerns that we have now forward. But again, I really don't. Is it the what? What I think it should be really tied on is with the registry, and I really think that is. How, I, I don't. I understand the approach, but the registry is what will drive this to a bit to a higher level. Okay, so let's talk about the registry. Because you have the you have the insight on how this registry is work or is gonna work and how it's being put together. You wanna enlighten us on how this is going and where they're at with it? All right. I don't have much information on where it is and, mm -hmm. and how what I might have an idea is what how the process works. Because mm -hmm. we do have a cattle breeders association, right? And they have a model which I believe the small breed association should just copy that model because it has been working for years. But let us be straight: this cattle breeders society, this registry, is built on the fact that farmers take this thing very serious. Our limiting factor, and I can tell you that why a registry won't ever work right now, is because farmers not keeping records. We don't even need a registry, you know. What we want is record keeping. Because we want to know who is what and what is where. That is it. That is it. Farmers don't have record keeper. We can go in and say, hey, you know, Cabra Ranch. Not, I know you keep good records, but I'm just using that example. Cabra Ranch has purchased these animals from there and who they got it from them have a history of it. That is not the case for the small women and sector. Few farmers keeping records properly. And that is where we have a serious problem. So if we're talking about leveling the pain field and starting from scratch, I think this is the opportunity for us to tie this, um, this whole AI and embryo transfer project with a registry to now get farmers record. And that should be a criteria. Farmers have to keep records for you to get access to this. If you're not keeping records, why are we giving you, you know, purebred genetics? So that's a criteria I think should be a part of it also. I don't know if you agree with me. But no, I, I think, think you know, I'm a big... A uh, big promoter of record keeping and, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's you can't manage what you don't know. So you can't manage what you don't know. So it's beyond even say facility alone. But simple thing that's yeah. management practice as in records is what we make this thing work. Yeah, and that's why I say go back to Oshin as an example. Teach Oshin how it works right, the right way, mm -hmm. for six months a year, and when you see that he has success and see the level that he's operating. I just say, yo, now you're good to go. We're going to drop two embryo free in, in a couple of animals and hope we have success. And, you know, that's what I, that's how I see it. And another thing that he had on his thing and that I think was huge was his level of commitment to rehabilitating bottles. Oh, I call know, it rehabilitating. You no, know, that's my favorite thing, you know, as in research, Research yeah. as let, let us be honest, without R and D, livestock mm -hmm. is dead. And the, if you check the history, anytime R and D is on top, the cattle, sheep and goat is booming because that is where all the in, that's the nucleus of the information. 
And a lot of people don't know this. I can guarantee you that Bull is probably the only facility in Jamaica that has kept records for so much years. You're the, if you want to know the best record keeping system, identification system of these animals, go to Bulls and check them files. They have, they have performance records for boar, Nubian, graded. They have, they, have, they, have, they have everything in place just that we don't have a system where this information now is out into the public domain. That has always been Bulls' problem for me. How is it that we have data and it's not published? Yeah, when we interviewed Mr. Farron, I asked him that question. I'm like, all that data that Bodles have, and he's like, he, he, he told me there's like some amazing data over there. Amazing. I'm like, is somebody putting this data in an accessible form? Uh, that's the you know, where the public can look it up. Is there an online or a mm -hmm. library or something where you can say, you can go, if I am a farmer, I want to know the history of a book that I get or a line that I get from bottles. How do I access it? Do I have to go into some basement and start those off boxes and boxes of paper? Or how does it work? Well, yeah, you know? that's, that's the problem. That's the problem that you have. But what I can say, the commitment to that is really great. That is that again. So we'll look at these three things together. Um, access to this new genetics for, for as much farmers as possible. A registry yeah. system that we can now, you know, look at the records, quantify the data, and then research and development to drive what we're doing. Because without that data collection, without somebody looking into what we're doing, we're going nowhere. And bodies have it. So for them to invest in a nutrition lab, that is a game changer for us because no longer have to be sending samples overseas. A farmer can go to bodies and understand what forges up. So we can start looking at performance data. Is 15% really better than 20% regarding feeding animals? I mean, question, so not debatable, right? So, borders can conduct level of research for us to move forward. Um, the whole, I remember, I'm, I'm a part of the project steering committee for the that borders redevelopment project. So, I can mm -hmm. say that they're actually planning to go into a herd upgrading software with RFID tags so mm -hmm. we can collect more data on a computer and have, you know, some, you know, some specialized person to kind of look into. So that is where I think we need to start. And if you look at it, Bodles, Bodles is who holds the data for all the nucleus breeds. And even for sheep and goat, they keep that data there. So the registration system should probably be coming through Bodles. Should, yeah. That's, that's just the fact. They, they are the one that already keep it for the Jamaica Red Pole, the Jamaica Black Pole, the Jamaica Hope. All that data from way back in the 40s, it can be found at, at Bodles. From the forties, same so, small. Okay, so if both if uh, bulls and the cattle um, sector has already uh, already has a working registry, why can't they copy that and edit it or change it a little bit to fit the rule? All right. As it, why, can't it, why can't they do it? Can I tell you this is not the first? I can tell you. Really. I, I, I remember at Bodles probably in 2015, 2016, we kept the first model appraisal for sheep and goat. Mr. Ferron, Mr. King, Mr. Rest in Peace, Mr. Vermont, Dr. Young, we we're all there. We brought animals from Bodles because we said, let us do the nucleus stock first because we know the genetics that is here. We can look into the records and know, say, hey, these animals came from Australia, these animals came from Canada. You know, and we wanted to do bodus and hunts the first. We started the process. You can go on my Facebook and see the picture of it. We're, you know, we're there doing the evaluation. They're saying this one is, you know, full blood or whatever. So that model is not new. It's the implementation of that model. That is where we're at. Who and what going to keep those resources and have it function? I can tell you why the Cattle Breeder Society is so successful is because the farmers are serious about it. The farmers plan their own appraisal. Did you know that? Oh. We go to Bengal farm or we go to that farm. Him say, hey, I keep an appraisal the end of the month. And then investing money in preparing for the team from Bodles, the, the special experts to come in and then bring him animals and showcase them to the team. So probably that is where we need to start. Farmers need to take this thing more serious than the thing that the government is going to do it for us. That is why the cattle breeder society is stronger than what we are. It's built on the private farmers. 
So, guys, that is where we have to start. Cabra Ranch, you need to say, guess what? Mr. Mark Bartley, we, you need to call us to your farm and say, guess what, guys? At this point, I've done five years of breeding. I want you guys to bring the expert and appraise my herd. I facilitate this process for you guys to come in. And that is where I think we need to start. You know, I don't have no full blood to appraise, but Mikey definitely, surely, is going to have to do that. To add yes. value to add value to his uh his his hurt. He's gonna have to get them prof the professionals, the experts to come in and say, Yep, that this is, is definitely what is here. What invest, is. In, invest in a little DNA, yeah. send it overseas and say, Hey, see, it's matching what the US call consider, you know, a full bread board. Yeah. It has to be driven from it have to be driven from you guys. That's that's, that's just the truth. It has to be us the farmers decide to say, boy, this is a business for us. We want to make the money. I want to prove to Trinidad that I can send them full bore animals. You can't expect the government to do that for you. That's not the government interest. It's your interest as the farmer to get that done. So when farmers start taking this thing a little bit more serious, the game will change. And that's what is happening now. For these years, we've been showing that we want to take this thing serious. And we're getting the highlight now because they see the we reach a critical mass where you have groups with 4,000 farmers across different groups, livestock Jamaica, progressive, um, the St. Elizabeth cluster, Cabra Ranch Live. We have so much people on it pulling in everybody from the sector to come and talk. They're seeing that you guys are putting your money where your mouth is, and that's the only way we're gonna drive the sector forward. We have to keep putting the money where our mouth is. There you go, it's true. You know what I mean? Spoken like a man that's passionate about them thing. You know? Of course. <laughs> for years. For years we've been yeah, doing this year. We've yeah. been knocking at this door for years. Yeah. It's true. Another thing that he mentioned was um, was the how should I put it? I think I'm, try, I'm not I'm trying to make sure I don't get what he's saying, what he said wrong. He he was talking about investing in in um, subsidizing the feed, oh, the pricing of feed. Yeah, I want to make sure I don't want to get it wrong because I don't want you know people run with he anything said. that he didn't he, say. He said that to me. He said, "Khalil, you need to work on you need to work on figures for me that that we could look into um, if we have to invest in silos and we as the government buy somebody's raw ingredients to kind of." you know, help with the whole fluctuation in prices. And I think that is a very big statement, as in that is a government now seriously looking at livestock to change the game. That is, that's just the truth. If we can have a system where the government is willing to say, guess what, we don't want the feed price to go over this, how we're capping it. And feed companies will willing to give you guys tax subsidies if you can keep the price below this when it's hurting your pocket. Proof for that. That is a game changer. And I really hope that is something that really been implemented because with how things going now, climate change, and we see these prices of feed getting crazy every week. Probably feed price going up. It's nothing we can do about it as a country. Because in the presentation, I kind of showed it. JB at one time, I think, and I can remember the date. So don't quote me on the date. Probably in you know early two thousands, planted five hundred acres of corn, and that was a pilot project to see that if we plant our own corn, we could probably you know stabilize the market, right? And when they harvested that corn, it only took the mill one shift to use all that corn, 500 acres. So let's be realistic. Do you think as a country we can plant corn or even soya bean to feed ourselves? I don't see it happening, right? <laughs> that's, that's just, that's just being honest. We have to find some substitutes. We have to be cost effective. And we need the government to kind of play that role in seeing how they can balance this for us to say, well, all right, we're willing to absorb some of these costs. Yeah, because I think that was my takeaway from what he was saying, was yeah. that he's thinking that he wants to approach the feed companies and either subsidize the cost of raw material that are coming in. Yes. So the feed prices, the local, the feed costs for local farmers it's not going through the roof every six months. It's yeah. not going up, going up, going up. So correct me if I'm wrong. Was that where he was going? Because I, I, I don't think I think that is direction. That's the direction yeah. that he's going to say, boy, hey, what wherever we can we can help you guys subsidize some of these classes, the levy, if it's whatever taxes you guys have to do. 
I think that is where he wants to kind of say, well, we'll, 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 we'll waiver some fees right there for you. We'll reduce the fees right there for you. So you can, you know, but then, you know, that, that alone might not can work. Our world price is, is like buying coin and soybean is like a stock market. You have to be buying in advance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They might be watching, you know, if you go on US soybean, they say price is going up, price is going down every day. It's just like the black market, the stock market. So it's a little bit more than that. I think we have to look into alternatives. And that is where we'll have a little leeway. If we can say, for example, when I did a research, um, with, Hypro, with Hypro before I went to Hypro, we were looking at using cassava in, in, in the pig feed and we supplemented about 30% of the diet with cassava replacing corn and we saw, you know, it was relatively the same results, even better in some cases. So I think that is an option that we have to look into, um, you know, find alternatives locally, but then again, that's the next big problem for us, you know, how, how we can really put that together as a country. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, Anthony, you have an interesting question here for us. Mm -hmm. I might have missed something. Are we saying that we have a system of registry already arranged? So if a farmer so desire and decide to invest in having his animals appraised, it can be facilitated through borders. Mm, I don't think that's what you said. No, no, no. That, no. We're, what I'm saying, Anthony, is that we tried this before, as in we had a working model before, and we did this. We had the farms. We brought we, we, we appraise animals at grows at bodos to see how this system could work. And I'm saying that we already have a registry model for cattle. So if we were to, we cannot simply copy that same system, use the same resources for the cattle breeder society and implement that for the small ruminants, then you know it's not like we're reinventing the wheel. So that is where we are. We want something formal for the association, and we decide who is the, the, the persons who going to do the appraisals, you know, Mr. Ferran, you know, Dr. Young, um, you know, the experts, you know, the lead experts in this field, you know, we'll use them to kind of guide that process. So that's, that's, that's what we're saying. Yeah, and back to the feed security thing. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of countries, poor countries, Africa, whatever, that are utilizing different byproducts whether it's cassava, whether it's whatever they're using to subsidize or to, you know, substitute is the word for corn and them things because they don't, they can't afford to be planting 10,000 acres of corn and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's doable. You know what I mean? It's doable for an island like Jamaica that, you know, we just have to, I think, I think his approach based on what I'm getting, he's trying to do an approach where, He's going to ramp up cassava production, right? Because he can create a market for the products of cassava. But the byproducts of the cassava, he can't wants, feed, he can feed, feed you. livestock. You know and I, I mean? can tell you, that was yeah. one of my major research. As in Bodo's, Bodo's, how are you? The, the, the unit that I was chief livestock officer for was the Animal Nutrition Forage Research Unit. And one of yeah. the mandates for that unit was to utilize indigenous materials to kind of see how we can drive the sector. So it's a mandate for Bodo's. You can go on the website and see it. So we did find alternatives. Yeah. For cassava is one of them. And we're depending on probably the like Red Strike project that was looking into cassava for beer. That would have helped offset Hold, that. Hold up. Don't say anything. Because you have a big moment. Welcome, oh, nice. sir. Oh, amazing. The man of the moment. I'll <laughs> give you the whole, whole screen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need the whole screen. Greetings. You don't need the whole screen. Greetings. It's great to have you here. Yeah, happy to be here on the I go chat. I, 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 yes, I love sir. you. I love the name. I love the name. I love the name. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're I hope you're in the background. You know, enjoying our discussion and your what I think was a really good presentation. Thank you, know? you thank you. I appreciate it. I uh, think um, we're going to have to have a, a entire program where I can come on uh -huh. and share. But I, I I saw this and thought it would be a great opportunity to just tune in, even for our five minutes, to appreciate you know, participate. Yeah, I appreciate it. So since you're only here for a short while. I got two yes, questions yeah. for you, right? Yeah. One, you, you the big, big thing for us we're discussing at the top is the embryo and AI, the semen um, giveaway, we'll call it, 
to qualified farmers or registered farmers were the words yeah. you used. And if you could briefly tell us, I know it's it's early, but how do you envision this working? Because we had a long discussion on it, on how we see it working, because we don't want what happened in the past of animals coming in or investment by the government goes to the wayside and we don't see the effects of it. So we're trying to yeah. make sure as a community here, say if you're going to go on such a big investment in the sector, you want to make sure it works. Yeah. So clearly we, we have identified livestock for much more targeted support. I think for a, a very long time, livestock has been like a uh, step chart of the mm -hmm. agriculture sector. Yeah. And I, I don't think we've really fulfilled our true potential. So um, we sat with the team and we said, what could we do to support the livestock sector some more? And um, it, it's twofold. So firstly, it's from a policy perspective. How do you set a policy framework to ensure that your livestock industry gets more support, gets the sort of handholding that it needs and gets the attention? So um, part of that means transitioning the Jamaica Dairy Development Board to the National Livestock Board, right? And that means some legislative changes. That means some changes in relation to um, authority for a number of things. But it also means developing an a entity that has direct responsibility for the livestock industry. And okay. growing the livestock industry in a real way, dealing with things like um, herd management, tagging, traceability, dealing with things like exploring how we can get our byproducts from our livestock sector into additional markets. So that's okay. critical. So that's a policy framework. But while we do this, and this is the reality with agriculture, um, while we set the policy framework, we still have to take steps now because the problem is real now. So we do import significant amounts of mutton, yes? And that's to satisfy our need for goat meat. And we have to get our farmers to take a much more semi-intensive intensive to goat rearing, right? That yes, means yes. improving technology in what we do. So it, it can't be the old time putting the goat out to pasture, waiting for the goat to mate, to ensure that you have the numbers. So the process now and the program is in that rapid multiplication of our goat population and our small ruminant population, not just goats. So we're going to be working with registered farmers. We're working with the Small Ruminant Association. I think one of the challenges we've had in the past is that we never had a fully built out, reputable, strong, Small Ruminants Association. I think everybody can agree that significant strides have been made in that regard now. And we're going to be working with registered farmers. So okay, so when you say, stick up here, when you say registered, what do you mean? Registered as a business or registered with RADA? Registered with RADA. Okay. Very important. But remember, the, 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 the kind of beauty and Safety, safety in this program is that you, you're not just giving out goats, yes? Right? You're yes. taking the artificial insemination route. You're saying to people, choose the breeds that you want, but you're working with people who are already in the industry. And in the industry, approaching it from a professional level. Because again, what we don't want is, um, we don't want poor outcomes. We really want to see the rapid multiplication. We really want to see people who appreciate that, you know, artificial insemination, but also the, the things like fodder, things like how do you ensure that your goats are being well taken care of? What can you do to increase your productivity? Things of that nature. So while we've spoken about the artificial insemination program, part of this program also includes traceability, also includes some handholding, right, in terms of working with our farmers to see how they can move from not intensive to more semi-intensive care for their goats, appreciating things like fodder, fodder banks, right? How you really supplement the feed for your goats, 
the, 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 the you know, we speak a lot about com how comfort or how do you ensure that your goats are comfortable, right? Because all the research has shown when your animals are comfortable, they do better. Yeah. Right. The outcomes is much better. And that's, that's outcomes true. in terms of weight, in terms of the tenderness of the meat. It's amazing to see what the research is showing you in relation to the difference between when you just allow an animal to graze in the hot sun and when you keep that animal in a specified goat house, for example, and bring the feed to the animal. Right. So it's not just artificial, artificial insemination. Clearly, that's a part of it. And you know, we put that out because clearly that's the main part of it. And what that means is that farmers who are registered would get one to three straws of semen. Yes. And yeah. we also have in the program, you may get an ovum or an embryo. So that's also in the program. But it's a bigger program about technical support. And Colin will tell you, we have done a very good job at training our people in relation to lifestyle, what we haven't done a good job of is placing the emphasis on it. So we have a lot of well-trained people. I mean, I did my, I was on a tour of the ministry recently and I spent the most time with my Rada livestock officer because she's just so passionate about it and about what needs to be done and the kits that they gave out last year and need to do more of, right? So the reality is that we do have a good set of people, what we're now doing is providing the support. Okay, great. So I have one more question because I know you're short on time. Feed. In your presentation, you mentioned uh, addressing the rising cost of feed. And you mentioned something about subsidizing whether the raw material, the cost of raw material, something to that effect. I do not rephrase you or represent what you, misrepresent what you said because you're here yeah. so i'd rather yeah. you explain what your approach is and how you plan to attack this yeah. so consistent we, rising we, fee we do have a real challenge yes and that challenge is because of what is happening on the world market with covid19 we are seeing significant increases in the main inputs to feed and you know it, it stretches across unfortunately, all sectors in agriculture. So we're seeing it in our chicken feed, we're seeing it in our goat feed, we're seeing it in our pig feed, we're seeing it in fertilizer. Because the reality is that things like corn between September 2020 and now May, we've seen an 80% rise in corn, we've seen a 35% rise in soybean. In fact, Worldwide feed prices have risen by about six to four percent. Locally, we've seen about a 30, 20 to 30 percent rise in feed. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I did my presentation, I said 15 to 20, but in checking back this week, there have been other increases, right? So, the, 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 the reality is that we have to take a, a, a number of approaches. So, you have to look at it in short, medium, long term. Yes. The medium term is we need to see how we can really ramp up our fodder brand production. Yeah. Right? We haven't taken it seriously. And we have to substitute more of the feed with fodder. Fodder, okay. silage, very important. Right? And again, we haven't treated it like a business. So we have we are going to have to work with more of our private sector players to say get into hay production, get into fodder production, get into fodder banks, right? Provide us with that that we can then supply to our farmers, right? That is the medium term, but it's something we have to start. No, I will have to work with the private sector to get them to recognize that we need significant plots of land in fodder production, right? Because that would help us tremendously. So, are you going to be are you going to be designating some of this uh, government land for that initiative? One hundred percent. We're going to be designating okay. some of the government sugarcane lands. We're going to mm -hmm. be working with people already in possession of leaseholds to the government to mm -hmm. say to them, "Look at this opportunity." 
And already the Jamaica Dairy Development Board has already started engaging people in that regard. Because it's critical. People don't appreciate, quite frankly, right? The, the concept of fodder, right? In, in South yeah. St. Elizabeth, before livestock, we appreciate that you have fields just for grass because we do mulching. Uh -huh. And it's the most <laughs> sacred commodity. But we have to spread that. So we're going to do that. So that's a medium term. Yes. Or we have to start that now. Right? The long term, quite frankly, I believe we will have to look at storage facilities for some of the critical elements of our feed makeup. And let me explain to you. The reality is that we don't have the economies of scale to grow some of the critical elements of feed, right? And it, it doesn't make sense we we hide from the reality, right? We, we've done some of the tests and we know we just cannot get the price point that would make it worthwhile for feed. So what that means is that you need to have storage so you can buy these items when they're at a low end. Yeah. Store them so that when they're at a high ebb, you could now release them. So ideally, what we should be doing now in this crisis is that the government should have a storage capacity that the private sector who prepares feed will be able to say, okay, on the world market, corn has gone up by 80%. I'm coming to you, government, right? And we say, okay, we bought corn when it was low. So we can send it to a cost. And you can keep the feed prices down. But that's the long-term solution. Yes. Because it means putting it in the storage capacity and having the resources to buy these feeds and the mixes to make the feed. In the short term, we're going to look at subsidies. We haven't clearly, subsidies are not easy, right? Um, because it takes money. And right now is a very difficult time. Government lost $70 billion in revenue last year so i've asked my peers to look at our budget which is really uh, chicken and bones to see if there is anything that can be done in the short term to put in a subsidy program for our livestock sector especially based on the impact of feed so we are having those meetings now we're meeting with our private providers we're meeting internally to look at our budget so i would say give me another couple of weeks and then we'll have a more definitive outcome as to whether we can or we can't i'm not promising right but we're looking at it because we appreciate that a number of our livestock farmers are suffering now and clearly we're going to continue the research to see what can be uh supplemented in our feed stock right if we're able to even supplement 20 percent of the ingredients to food to the feed it would be significant so we're going to continue that research. Some research has started, but overall, I know a lot of people say, why we don't grow corn, why we don't grow... It's just not feasible, right? It's just not feasible. Okay, understood. Sir, thank you for taking the time. And no know that there's an open invitation. I need you to be yeah, on the so show we're for gonna, an we're hour. Gonna organize, we're going to yes. organize a chat that yes. I'll come and spend the entire time. Yes, and, sir. Um, I know there's still a lot to be done. I mm -hmm. hope people have seen the presentation. If you haven't, you can check the social media pages and reach out to me. You know, we're in this thing together and together we will transform Jamaica because agriculture is the real force that will transform Jamaica. All right. You hear All from right. the minister himself. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Okay. All right, boss. Thank you. All right. Good, good. Yeah. That was good, eh? Hey. Man, he's a man of his word. I can yep. say that much. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like this presentation. I thought there was a lot of good things, great things in there for our sector. And he stuck to his word and said, if he can jump on, he'll jump on. You know, I know people have a ton of questions for him. But as I said, we're going to get him on for a whole session. And he, and he said he will be taking questions and explaining as much as he can based on where he's at. But one number thing we gotta remember, he's the youngest minister of agriculture ever. He's a young guy. You know what I mean? He's enthusiastic and we met with him, spoke with him. I know he's enthusiastic about the sector. And we're gonna see 
what happens? You know what I mean? I think we should support because he has great ideas. Yes. And you know what I mean? He, he's the type of guy will agree to disagree. But at the end of the day, he's doing things that I think will help us. Or he's trying to do things that 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 will help us. I think yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. One thing one thing he keeps saying is the association, the association. And in fact, I don't see the association active. So if they're active behind the scene doing things with him, they need to come forward and say, Yo, this is what we're doing. You know what I mean? I've been telling them before that communication is a problem with them and here it is. You know, the minister minister is talking about the association, the association, but anybody in here ever tell me Drop me a note in the comments the last time the association give you guys some tin bits on what they're doing outside of Mr. Bernard's okay. YouTube channel. Please, so I don't speak out of turn. Tell me in the comments if the association give you guys an update lately on anything they're doing. Well, what, what I can say though is that I, I personally know that a lot of these, a lot of the lobbying um you know, it's really behind closed doors you don't see it you would not see mr bernard you know at some of these meetings you know pressuring to say hey we need the attention but i've seen it um again yes communication is a big thing but um i think i think that will come with as in what i know now is that the association so need a little bit more support um both at the government level for example okay they have a Kali. You cannot support. You can't give support to something you don't know about. No, wait, man, wait, wait. It's not. It's not about support from say your level. The support have to come from the government who give them this power, right? So, for example, let's let me, let's hear me out. The, the category of society had a different take. As I said, this was pumped. This was pumped up by the farmers who would go down to borders and challenge border staff and challenge the government to get this done. That is how the category of society have the power. It's the category of society didn't even need in the office because they would the farmers were willing to do this on their own. And that is where again I think this whole association talk need to be I need need, need to revamp it. Ray, you are a part of the association. This not is what you're I'm not saying yeah. this role that you're playing is what the association needs. That is what it needs. It needs individual farmers because it's really about individuals paying a small bill, supposed to be lobbying. And this is a part of lobbying. You out there giving the information. You out there trying to pull people together. That is where I think we need to start. Because honestly, without certain financial support, an organization could, could never, never function properly. It could never. Okay, let me give you an example of the lack of communication and how poor it is on the association's part. Right? Mr. Peter Bakuk and Lincoln them is trying to do a, a an agreement with a feed company to get a cheap feed, cheaper feed, feed at a cheaper cost. Mr. Maku posts videos, messages and switch on his page on every page where he's at. Because he needs people support. He needs Farmers support. He needs farmers to be engaging it so he can say, look, I got the numbers. That's all I was asking of the association a year ago. That's the same thing Mackie was asking, Lincoln was asking, just tell us what's going on so we can give you the support. Tell us what's going on. It's that simple. If you're going into a pre last night meeting and whatever, tell us that you're going to do this next Thursday or you did it and you say this is the result of it so we can be in full support of it or tell you, you know, oh, we should have X, Y, Z, this way, that way, whatever. I'm sure Peter Mako can link and them get a lot of feedback on how they should approach this, whether it's good or bad, but at least... People are engaged because it's something that benefits them. That's all I'm asking for. I don't need to know word for word what you do in at a meeting or what you say in at a meeting. But at the end of the day, if you're doing something on behalf of the group, then you should tell the group, I'm doing X, Y, Z. I'm trying to be to do X, Y, Z. I'm trying to get X, Y, Z. It can't happen in secret. 
because the fear is it happens in secret, it's successful, and it's distributed in secret. That is the problem. I get, I, I get some of your point, but then again, I can tell you, I think again the role is in the farmer's hands. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm your engagement. I am not, not sure. If, and I'm not sure because I can tell you, me and Mr. Bernard, I approached Mr. Bernard and said, Mr. Bernard, Hyper is willing to put this together. I'm willing to get you a discounted price. The association can do what they want to do. But then again, you have to say, Khalil, this is what's coming from Hyper. I need the other feed company to put this on the table also. I'm sure we reached a point where both was planning to put this on the table. But then there's a whole lot of other stuff that needs to. So, so today I saw them post. And I'm like, so who's going to deal with the operation costs? First, who's going to absorb that operation cost? Operation of what? Up, say cheaper feed from a company. Okay, there's a okay. trans there's Stick a transportation cost. Stick up wait, 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 wait. There's a transportation cost. There's a storage cost. There's a handling cost. There's an administrative cost. Who is going to absorb? Okay. Cost? Now, you see, you only look at it one way. I didn't even want to get into this because this is not what tonight's show is about. But you only see it one way. If the company that they're dealing with says, yo, you just need an account and a code. You order it online and you can pick it up. Yes, Whoever it is. Ray, Ray, all right. Stop now. I'm saying we have, we have been down this road already. Well, all right. I order from St. Elizabeth, right? Mm -hmm. From the feed mill. It's no different from a farmer who say, you know what, I'm going to buy directly from the factory and get my 5% discount. He has, to, he has to drive his own truck to the factory, right? To get it. He must be with the handling, he must be with the storage. I'm saying, if you guys do this as a group, who is going to absorb that cost? The group have to absorb yeah, the cost. Khalil, yeah, so Khalil, Khalil, there's more, Khalil, there is more than one way to skin the cat. I'm waiting to see that scat. Is, that, that and the scat going to be skinned. I'm telling you, it will be done because it never, because it's always impossible. It's always impossible until it gets done. Never say, I never say it's impossible. Right. Right. I'm just saying, the way you guys talking about it, it cannot work like that. No, That's no, I think, I think, I think, I think you need to be enlightened on the approach. I don't think the right. approach is, I don't think the approach is what you're thinking it is. You know, I mean? you know hold, hold on, on, hold on, hold on. Don't get, don't get Peter, don't get Peter to come and go explain please, it because please, it's a part, please, of, the, please, it's a part of the whole thing. Ray, Ray, please yeah. don't put me, please don't put me in that position right now. Okay, all right, cool. I will, I will, I will, I will. Is this, this model new? I never is show. This, is this model new about getting feed at a cheaper for as a group? Isn't that what Mr. Bart is doing right now? Didn't we create this type of model before? No, but what I'm saying it's is, not new. no, it's not no. new. No, it's not it's getting not cheap. Me. No, not listen me. to me, Khalil. Listen to me for a second. Getting cheaper cost, cheaper getting feed for a cheaper cost is not new, but okay. there's it. always different ways to get there. We can drive three different ways to get to Kingston, mm -hmm. but, but, me still I, but me still I get to Kingston. So whichever way they get it and get it done. It's not a big deal as long as it gets done. What I'm saying? No, I'm not, I'm saying, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying there's still a lot of conditions that come with it to get to make it work. Like you, like, like, like like you, are, like you are foreseeing. The image. That's not that, being put out there. That's you, that's, you are foreseeing that there's a lot of hurdles and a lot of T's and I's and other things. We did it. We ourselves did that. We <laughs> yes, know the we hurdles did. what we got through to get it yes. done. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So that's why I'm no say it's possible right. anybody can jump to any other than what they need to do. But if you can say you represent a, a, a feed company, so you have to hold a position. Definitely. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Well, okay, let's get back to what we're here for. And I know it's feed cost is part of the whole thing because the minister just talked about it. But another thing that he um he talked about was innovative uh approach to farming yes you know what i mean which you know we're a big um we're a big supporter of 
new ways to do things. You know what I mean? Don't be scared to try new things. Don't be scared to change your mind about how you approach something. And he talked about engage, engaging with farmers and using technology to do a lot of things. So you as the man on the inside, you're, are you on that uh, advising committee? No, I, as, as in it's hard. hard. No, it's hard. It's hard to be an advisory committee when in, in, my, in my capacity. It's hard. Oh, but do you know somebody on the committee? Well, yeah, we know a few persons on the committee, yes. So you have some, you can speak on what their approach is and the things they're thinking. Well, no, no, I can't, I, can't, I can't speak on that approach. What, what, what I can do is that anytime mm -hmm. I see a date or if I know something, I'll definitely show it to the group. But mm -hmm. um, I think the minister was pretty clear. I think traceability, this registry is what is going to help us change again, right? We see they do it for the cattle sector. And they did that just to open up new markets. So we could export, you know, we could export patties, we could, you know, cut down on. It wasn't really for Pradia last night, but it could assist in that process if the DNA component was attached to it properly. Right? So I think mm -hmm. that is where we're trying to put it together. And I think Borders will definitely lead the way in that regard. Borders, the, the, the redevelopment project for Borders is geared towards moving the livestock sector into that type of um. We say no technologically advanced way. You know the dairy system is more advanced. You know herd management software is you can easily you know put data together. And I think those models going to make us understand. Say, hey, it can work in Jamaica. It's not here in Jamaica. You know a fully RFID system is not in Jamaica. We need somebody to kind of test run that model, and we can now say, hey, it can work. Let us make this um, part of the system. You know across the island. So we are really banking on banking on that development project, you know, that has the money to kind of push that system out there and these new technologies that we need to see. You know, it was, it was again, Bodles, Cardi, that basically bring this whole AI and embryo transfer through project funding to the country, you know, outside of Kenneth King and some of the private guys, but to make it more accessible to the public. You know, VSD have a fertility lab, and a lot of persons don't know that. There is a fertility lab at Bodles that store semen, pack semen straws and offer AI service to farmers at a discounted price before both feed companies went into this. So, you know, that is where I think we need to start. You know, the government kind of pump started once they, once the private sector see it working and, 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 the, and the take up from the farmers, then I think, you know, the system will continue to grow in the right direction. So that's, that's where we are. That's, that's where we are now. It's frozen. Hello. It froze. It's on my side. Yeah, you guys hearing me? Henry. Oh, okay, let us let us wait until until we come back um but all right let us let us talk about you know this 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 feed model um farmers we i definitely feel it for you with how you know the fluctuating prices with feed and i believe definitely if you guys come together farm yourself into a group and purchase the feed in bulk you will get a discount you know buying it from the factory directly already gives gives you that option and that is really where you guys are going to get to save some more money because that is what is important. However, I think, I think the approach should be a little bit different um, because we have tried it and we've seen where, where we can have some more improvements if we did a little bit different. So that's really what I'm saying, you know, that's, that's it. I welcome Ray. Yeah, do you look like every week now my internet's dropping out. I'm gonna have to call Flo or something because it's too persistent for us to see. Okay, so here's what's going on in Kalia. Mm -hmm. um, we have to think about the, the approach to using uh, this new technology that is gonna be available to us. And I think it starts with, with uh, educating um, the masses. 
Number one is a vast majority of the farmers that I get in, I encounter are not technical, te te technically inclined when it comes to using some of this technology. So I, I feel like we're a generation away from this becoming a, a, a normal thing. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. I, I see that. I, mean? I see that. Um, and that is why sometimes I kind of lost focus. My focus kind of someone on the younger generation because I believe, you know, by the time they reach at our level, they should be way surpassed where I'm at. Yes. Really coming on, and they'll be the ones to make us feel proud in our older ages to say, Yo, see your machine, they're doing it the right way. And that's really yeah. my hope because mm -hmm. there is a certain things you cannot tell anybody right now because we do it so long. He would not realize, like, for example, face feeding. Face feeding is proven technology to show that, hey, you cannot just feed one diet throughout the entire pen. That makes no financial sense. Some animals don't need this, some animals don't need that. So why is it that we're still doing that practice? It's, and it's still in, like in the poultry industry. You have two different feed. You have one you feed first and you have one that finish. Nobody uses that, that type of system. Same for the pig industry. Nobody really follows this. It's few farmers who realize the savings or the benefits of it will take it on. They feed, grow a ration, they give so on board to everybody. So as we say, we we're probably two generations ahead. Yeah. Really, really, really I think, true. yeah, but um, doesn't mean that we can't just keep hammering it away. No, no, no. It. That's, that's it it yeah, that's let people doing. know that, hey, it's a new way. You know what I mean? You have to adapt. If you want to succeed in this environment, this climate, this kind of uh, farm, it's a new way of operating a farm. You have to use the technology. You know what I mean? Yes. You have to use the technology. You know what I mean? Peter McCook is a perfect example for an old man that's just like on top of his game. And Peter, I'm not, I'm not calling you old, Peter. I'm just saying that in our age group, we are, we're supposed, we are like elders. You know what I mean? Like, no, 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 no. Mr. McCook clearly, clearly within the game, as in, we never yeah. know Mr. McCook. No, we see him posting and putting out yeah. the information, though, getting more exactly. social media friendly. And that is what I want the farmers to get at. We need to adapt to the times. We need yeah. to move forward because that, that's the only way we're going to change this game. The younger generation yeah. is looking to us to see what is it that they're doing. Well, you know them say, No, old man think they might deal with the same way. You can't you can't give the information on YouTube. So Okay, so here's a here's a dynamite question for you, a grenade question. How are you promoting general maintenance ration? How am I promoting it? Yeah. I don't, I, can I get, I'll be more, more specific. What do you mean, how am I promoting it? As in, well, I can say we promote it as the cost, cost effective feed for a lot of small ruminant farmers. Because we remember, Hyper have two rations. We have the goat ration, which is 18% protein, and we have the general maintenance ration, which is 15% protein. So at first, I'll just tell you how this starts. At first, when I was, you know, just go to Hyper, talking to Ray, talking to Mr. Bartley, they're like, Khalil, on the price of feed expensive, right? High pro has always been probably a little bit more expensive than the competitor. So it's like, if you can cut my price, then we'll have something. I'm like, all right, guys, I don't know if I can cut down that 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 that, that general maintenance because protein is the most expensive part of your diet. I can make a cheaper feed for you and it'll give you relatively the same results. So what is it that would do a family to that cheaper ration, lower the protein? And if you look at it, simply reducing your protein content by 3% can have your feed price a little bit cheaper. But it's not only that, the technology into developing the formulation was a little bit different. What we did was amino acid balancing, which is a game-changing technology for, for nutritionists. Instead of we just giving you raw soya bean protein, we added specific amino acids that we know these animals are limiting with. For example, lysine, for example, methionine. And this is why we have relatively the same results where Mr. Bartley can say, I'm not seeing much differences. I don't even see any differences at all. It works as a good creeper feed. Because I said, guys, animals don't have a crude protein requirement. They have an amino acid requirement. And if you have a nutritionist that can balance that for you behind the doors, that is where you want. Okay, we're not, 
We're not going to dig into that again because we actually had to bring on, what's her name? We talked about that so many times, Dr. We Denny. Had to bring in, yeah, we had to bring in Dr. Denny to explain that whole concept to us. And the guy from yeah. Trinidad, Martin Hume. Yeah, uh, Martin, yeah. The power of what, what, what is it that an animal needs? And farmers, if you're going to build a notion that, hey, because it has higher protein, that means the animal is going to be better, then I'm sorry. When your costs, you will never see true profit if that is your approach to it. I can tell you, when you go commercial, and if you're running a thousand dollar operation, there's no possibility you can look at it like that. As a matter of fact, I would invest, I would tell farmers to try to secure your own protein source. If you're realizing it's what killing us right now, the cost of protein, the cost of corn, soya bean also going up a lot. It's not only corn anymore. Soya bean price has significantly risen. So guys, we have a lot to learn. We, as in, I wish you guys would reach out to me more. I'm not trying to bash anything. I'm trying to inform you as the farmer that, hey, sometimes we approach to how we look at this is wrong. And you can, if you want, you can research it yourself. Go to the NRC and look at the requirements for these animals and see if your feed company is giving you what is required. That is where the game going to change when the farmers is more informed. They say, hey, I went to the National Research Council and them tell me that my animal only requires 16% protein. This animal only requires probably 20% protein. So why is it that I'm feeding this one Russian trophy timer? Why is it that my feed look like this? Be, let's get the common and farm, guys. And then you'll probably get a little bit more understanding of why is it that I'm pushing you in this direction. It's really not just to push just a one feed, but it's just to inform you. Because at the end of the day, it comes down to the cost of production. And if you guys are not benefiting, I can't sell you feed. Okay, with that said, I know, I'll say because, you know, I came out here and I told people that the maintenance ration works. And we just didn't do it because I've been working with Khalil for before Khalil was at Hypro. But we actually had some people on this platform to explain. I didn't take his word on with it, although I trust what he says because he's always been upfront. But there's many, like three different doctors or scientists, nutritionists, whatever their titles are, they came on and their sentiments were the same. Now, you got the caveat is the production system. How do you feed? How do you take care of your animals? That is, that's what makes the difference. You know what I mean? So I, I am not going to tell somebody, go use this or go use that or whatever. What I tell people is have best practices. And then you start collecting the data and you will see the difference. You will know what works, you'll know what doesn't work. You know what I mean? And and then you go from there. But I can tell you the maintenance ration works for us in the way our system is applied. It works. And I'm not saying that the other, that Nutramix doesn't work. It works. But one is cheaper. And I get similar result from the maintenance ration that I got with the grower from Nutrimix. And it's cheaper. So that is my honest opinion. And I love both companies because I love Dr. Young, I love Dr. Patrick, I love Khalil, I love Dr. McHugh. And you know, I mean, it's all love. It's which one you have a better relationship with or which one has been, you know, it all depends on what your preference is. You know, I mean, both three companies, I think, are doing what they do and people are getting amazing results from their products. Pricing is going up and this is where we're at. We're, we're trying to figure out, okay, which company we go to based on price right now. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what it is. You know what I mean? The profit margin, like the profit margin, keep cost down, so we have a bigger profit in our pocket. And whichever company you can get that from, you can't go wrong. I tell you that. You know what I mean? Kali, like I'm running more than talk kind of thing because, of no, course, he's a hyper. No, no. So, you know what I mean? So, you know, don't watch him. Don't watch him. You're doing what you got to do to get your best price. <laughs> because it ain't going to stop us from telling you guys how Khalil is not going to hold back and don't tell you what he knows and share information with you because you 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 challenge him 
on his thing. But the truth is, do what's best for you. But you can't make decisions without collecting data, without doing record keeping, without checking weaning weight from the last, from the grower versus weaning weight to the llama ram versus. You, you have to do the comparison to figure out which one's working, which one's not working. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, is, Grant I Miller think, says, yeah, go ahead, Kali. You know, and I think that is what, I think yeah. serious farmers is what, do it. You have to do your own research on farms. So that's what my challenge is to you farmers. Conduct your own research. Um, see where everything fits for you. And that is ultimately where you're going to make your money. That is how we're going to make, even us as feed companies, make the adjustments. We made the adjustments based on, 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 on a group saying that, hey, Kali, we want better price and we want the same results. So I think, that is it. You know, it's, it's a part of lobbying. It's part of putting things together. Okay. Um, this guy said, the problem that we have, Garth said, the, Garth said, the problem that we have, the farmers face is not the quality of the feed, but it's the cost of the feed. How can mm -hmm. we get the cost of feeding one per day below a certain cost, below $100 per day? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm a guy. I think, you know, your, your nutritionist can guide you like that because, for example, for some of these larger companies that we work with, I have to develop a phase feeding program for them. And it comes down to the cost per head per day because that's what they're watching. Um, that comes with, again, the total mixed ration system is what gives you that option. Um, we can use different ingredients. It's not like we're cutting down a, a farm to say, hey, use this ration. You know, they, they, they decide on what they want. They do their own raw ingredients at times. And I develop a formulation for them that would meet the animal requirement and looking at the cost per day, what we call a least cost formulation. And that is where your nutritionist really kind of assist you with, you know, maintaining that budget for your farm to make you have more profitability. And that's the advantage of a nutritionist. So guys, take that up on your head and talk to your nutritionist and allow them to guide you in that regard. Um, Darren is saying you can switch if you can get it. I'm not, I'm, 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 not sure about, I don't, I'm not sure about that. Um, high prime farm stores have crossed the island. Um, probably if you if you if you can tell me where you are, we can assist with pointing to which farm store might have it or how is it you can get access to it. But I believe the distribution of any feed type from any side is right across the island. They have farm stores in every Crimson corner. So maybe it's where you are, and we can give you guidance to, you know, somewhere closer to him. Here's a question that comes up quite frequently when I talk to people, when they ask and I tell them what I use, they say it's more expensive. Why is it more expensive in certain stores, Galio? All right. Well, well that's supposed to be a cheaper option. All right. Well, that, and I've, I've, re I've seen it where I've went to some places, and I'm like, this is the price. This is the price for the feed. And in that case, no, we have a problem because if the farm store decide to put on a particular markup, we have no control of that, right? That is really, that is something that I, that's bigger than me regarding, you know, who would tell them, say, hey, you know, I don't know if we have any control to tell a farm store the level of markup that they can probably, is the feed where they can get the most markup on because they're getting for a cheaper price. And we want to market up to make that, to make that profit off it so they can sustain their business. So, okay, so here's a, okay, so Khalil, here's a, here's here's how this offends somebody like me, right? Mm -hmm. Because I put my name, our company name, our animals on the front line mm -hmm. to endorse this, with the understanding that this will be a cheaper options for farmers. Mm -hmm. So if in the long run it's costing farmers more or whatever. What, what is the purpose of me doing that? What is the purpose of Mackie doing that? I get my now. point. No, no, I get your point. I get your point. But I'm saying, as, as what I'm saying, that we do not have control over independent store. Yeah, well, you can, but somebody can tell the farm, the, the, the farm store, say, yo, you getting this at this rate, it can go over a certain, you can't be making certain amount over yeah, it. Honestly, like honestly, I'm, not, I'm not sure how that works. You know, like oh, Apple, everywhere you go, Apple phone at the same price. Yeah. But as no I matter say, but where the, you go. With the Apple store. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, so so Apple Apple is the is is like 
Apple and Samsung is like hyper and neutral mix in Jamaica. Right? As it, that, that again, I think it's like it's like location. To be honest with you, because I've, I've seen it in some places, I'm like, no man, it's not right. And we know what the as it, we know what the meal price is. You know, if you buy the bulk, we know what the five percent discount that this feed is. But why they put on such a heavy markup on it? I honestly, Ray, that one is much bigger than me. Much bigger than me. Yeah, I understand it bigger than you, but I was want the farmers to know that. This whole thing was created with that sentiment is that it's a cheaper option for farmers. You know what I mean? So the farm stores are raping farmers. It's just why we need to just come together and get our own bulk deal. And we and you know Khalil is a big uh, supporter of protecting farm stores, but who's looking up for the end user, man? Nobody's looking up for the end We have to pick up the distributors who have been doing this for years. As in, yeah, they've been doing it for years, but they've been like, raping you for years too. Well, I, I don't know about the rape because, as I said, there's options. Let's, for, let's look, for example, look at the commercial poultry producers. They don't go to the farm store. They have their feed delivered to their farm. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think, as I said, I think when the game change, especially for the small ruminant industry, we have a very similar deal where, you know, because Cabra Ranch is at a commercial level, you buy directly from the, the store and you won't have to go through the middleman. The middleman is always an important business. But as yeah. I say, once the game take, once, once farmers become more commercial, we, you're not going to want that. And I think that is what is happening now. We're coming to say, hey, make a group up and go directly. To the to the feed mill because you want to grow with numbers and that is a that's a good signal for the industry. I think that will even open up the feed companies' eyes to say, "All right, these guys are getting serious because they're trying to bypass the middleman and come down directly to me." So it's kudos to the industry. It's kudos that we're growing in that direction, but it's a system that has been here for years. So we can't bash the farm store. Okay? If it wasn't for the farm store, a lot of persons wouldn't get access to people because they don't have a car. They don't have that. It's easy to just go down the road and buy a bag and try to raise them chicken. So they have their place. But now as farmers grow and the industry is growing and we're thinking about profit now, we have farmers now have to change their approach. It's a part of the game. It's a part of it. It happens. It's just the growth of the sector. It's just the growth. It's, the sector is growing while we're having this new approach and this conversation. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I respect your opinion and I think you make some valid points. I always think farm stores play a very important part in the network of vendors and distribution in you know agriculture and farming livestock all that stuff but i think and i said this before they they have to evolve into what it is hap what is happening in the uh, but we're not but we, but they have to evolve. Evolve. if 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 this model continue to be a trend we are the farmers now planning to go directly to the, the store and do their own thing group. You don't think the farm store is going to have to make adjustments to save their business? You're going to have to. So, so as I said, guys, is this is a part of lobbying. This is a part of really pulling the industry together and shaping it to how we want it because you are the end user. So if the end user stop going to the farm store, the farm store says, guess what? Drop them prices then I deliver to the service for free and everything might come. So change the industry, guys. That is simply what I'm saying. You know? But do it the right way. It's not bicker against each other and discredit each other. I mean, that's not necessary. No, that's not what we're doing, man. We're having lively <laughs> discussions and ashing out our differences and that is, point that that is, that is that's what we're doing. That's, that's what we're doing. If you do it the right way, it's you benefit. That's yeah. how I see. And I really appreciate, you know, everybody putting in their opinions and, you know, so we can have a lively discussion on this. And because at the end... I learned something from this man. You learned something from that man. A man learned something from me. And we move forward. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is moving in a positive direction where farmers realize, hey, it's not impossible for me to team up with 10 men and get the feed $100 cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It just takes a little more effort to go. You know what I mean? Go at it. A little more effort to have a conversation, negotiate it. You know what I mean? So definitely it's a good it's a good move. And I have to give Lincoln and Peter and them props because they could sit on their hands and just 
do whatever, but they're actually going after something. They're actually going I'm, after it. I'm not, I'm nothing is wrong with that. Yeah, they're actually nothing going after it. So I'm telling you guys, talk to Lincoln and Peter them. You know what I mean? If you're on that side of the, the, the feed spectrum, I mean, if you're on Khalil's side, Khal, Khalil and... From the hyper uh, side. Uh, from the hyper side. It's the hyper the, side. The, okay, Richard. I mean, like, <laughs> I'll call up corporate names to the cards that people are going to say, yo, I would, I would, who am I lying with? Uh, but I get telling you straight, I use hypro maintenance ration. That's what I use. Because that's what we develop with Khalil. You know what I mean? And that's what we use. Um, any other questions you got for Khalil or myself or anything you want to discuss that we can actually talk about? Because, you know, it's been a very good discussion tonight. Khalil, yeah, go on with great. things, Bridget. It was great. It was great. You know? you, you, show, you show going on good? <laughs> hey, hey, it's hey, our man. show, bro. It's everybody <laughs> in here show because there's people here. Every these people show up every week, and so without true. them, we couldn't so do it. You know what I mean? True. So, uh, it's feel, I feel with team. Yeah, man, it's, it's, like, it's really for so far, friend. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so Darren, Darren has a question about the, the protein thing. Shoot your question, Darren. Oh, come on, Mr. Henry. You come on. You know what's going on. Henry's farm, man. We, we're building that up the right way. And I can tell you, Mr. Henry's farm is going to be one of those big commercial meat producers coming up soon, guys. We, as in, we have different persons in the group, Cabra Ranch for dairy, Mackie for genetics, and Henry for meat. And we have a whole line for the small industry, the small meat industry to kind of look at these models and, and take examples from. That's part of our vision as a, as a team going forward. To show the Darren, virus. Okay. Darren, what is your question? You said protein argument set to, but here's my question. What is the question, Darren? Oh, I think you just posed this question. Since the protein content has been reduced in the general maintenance ration, can the protein then come from other natural sources? Um, and, 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 and that is one of the reasons why I never have a problem in reducing the protein in the feed. Because as I said to guys, we don't have a protein deficiency in Jamaica. We have, we have leucina. Leucina is the same as 18, 20% food protein. Right? Leucina. Yeah. Mulberry, um, 18 to 21% crude protein. All right? So... We don't have a protein problem in Jamaica. I think the farmers just were just not utilizing what we have to offset some of these costs. And we run down the notion that we need it when we really have it in our backyards already. Guango pot, 15% crude protein. Right? So, guys, we don't have a protein deficiency. And not until we take that out of our mind and kind of check, check, check the guys in India and in Africa how they look at their models, where they're using their natural protein sources to reduce their costs. And that is the approach I want to our farmers. It's a more sustainable approach for the long term. It's much more sustainable and to depend on us as the feed company to provide you with these high quality products that are going to fluctuate in price based on what the world market is saying. So I'm looking at a sustainable environment for us as farmers. So think about it, guys. If, if, if you check the history, I've always been pushing mulberry high protein fodder banks for us to kind of secure reinvestment because we cannot depend on, 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 on concentrate to be, to be the protein source. It's ridiculous. And the world has changed. If you check your research, concentrate should really be an energy supplement. It really should be an energy supplement to our farmers. That's, just the, that's, that's where the game is. So we have, we have a lot of fixing to do, a lot of teaching. And I think, as I said, we need the research to kind of support us. Even we can go online and find it because a lot of guys have been doing this long before us. But we need this, you know, we need farmers locally to do it for themselves. You see it for yourself and you can understand it, boy. Um, that, that's so true. So. When are we going to see a Khalil farm? You guys, you guys show you ready for that? Yep. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll start my vlog and show you guys what I'm doing. Are you serious? You have something I, up your sleeve? As in, I, it was, I never want to release it as yet, but you, I, I think it's time so we can watch 
watch my style and the approach to farming. Khalid, are you serious or are you joking? I'm, I'm dead serious. You have a farm? Ray, Ray let, me, let, let me give you a history. When I, went to, when I went to Case in 2007, I was a goat farmer, greenhouse farmer, archon farmer. I've been farming for years. No, I didn't, I'm not saying you weren't. I no, know, I'm not I'm not saying, I didn't, I'm not I didn't know that you currently have. My, 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 brother, my brother made a big investment in the market. As a matter of fact, I think he, one of his birthday presents, he got one of those $70,000 new beans from Dickie Morrison. Pure bread stock. That's, so we, we've been in the industry for a little while doing our thing. But my approach is a little bit different, guys. I do, I do crop farming, for example. Like we do, you know, sweet potato and green peppers. But oh, I thought you were talking about livestock. No, well, yeah, we I'm going to show you my livestock. So now I raise cattle, for example. I have cattle. I know, about, I know about the crops though. I didn't know you have like you currently I, have livestock. Yeah, I, I have cattle in St. Elizabeth. I've been doing that from um 2000 and probably 15, 16. Uh, but you know, I, I, as in I don't really publicize this stuff. Okay, I have another question for you. Give us some info on, on URC. I think that is something you referenced. What is URC? I think it's RFID. He's talking about. Oh, the RFID. Um, it's, it's, it's really it's really the, the the electronic tagging system for animals, but they have more comprehensive software now where it, you can actually use it to just collect data. So it's really a, it's like the normal tags, but it uses um low radio frequency waves. So I can give an example. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think I did it. I have, I have a video out to where when I when I was in Israel, we were doing research with some with some Holsteins, a feed research to check the dry matter intake and how the feed perform on their milk yields. And we have specific cages that each animal will come to. And the RFE that tag is what gives animal access to the feed. So if number 29 don't come to number 29 stall, this system won't open to allow the animal to come and get feed. Also, uh, when the animal come inside the parlor, it could say, hey, 27 is in the parlor, and we can easily record the data. If the animal walked and went to, say, paddock 23, you have antennas inside the pit and say, hey, animal 29 is in paddock 23, or you know, animal 24 is in paddock 1. So it helps you to trace the animals there. And this now can even work when you're looking at meat traceability. So when the animals enter the abattoir, the public health inspector or the butcher could go, poop, pick up and say, this animal comes from Cabra Ranch number 21 because it's already inside of a database. So it's one of those state-of-the-art traceability system for animals, which would help with um, record keeping and even with predial lastly. So if an animal, if a guy come on your farm, take up the animal and run off the pike, and you'll be alerted, hey, the animal just ran through your gate because they have these radio frequency things in place. So it's, it's very similar to like what they have in the in the store, like probably Walmart, where they might touch this thing to it and have to take it off when you leave in the store and kind of alert you when somebody is stealing a product. So, but it's for animals. They have it both for tax and both as implants. So I hope that's where the industry can go. How far are we away you think we are for small ruminants with that? Oh I think I think the I think that's the I think the small ruminant industry could be the easiest one to apply that technology. In China, it's very cheap. As we say again, farmers, we, we have to put some money where our mouth Yeah, but is it, is, does it, is, is it, can it be a local thing, local as in local to your farm, or it has it to be, be part of, or it has to be part no, of a can be, be local to your farm. You can buy the whole setup with the antennas and your own tag and your own responder, all that type of stuff. And as I say, Bodo is supposed to roll out something like this in your system. And I think that will you know, play the model for us farmers to go and say, hey, this thing really working. You know? And you know, probably in you know, peak farmers' interest in to purchase it for themselves. But we did look at it. It's pretty expensive. The whole system. The whole system. The, the antennas and the responder thing is up to the cheap, the, the most expensive parts, but the tags are cheap. You can buy the them tag in is China. cheap. The tag, the tag is, is cheap. cheap. But yeah. the system to track the tags is expensive. It's, it's expensive. I see that the, the I still China have some reasonable price one, but we don't know the quality of them. But yeah, it's, it it is is a is an investment. But anything and I think, sure, and I think is a big investment overall. And these softwares are going to into, I think moving into sub subscription format. Highly likely, in way. So 
that means it's an ongoing cost to you, and that cost is not really low at the moment. Right? Like, well, the ones that we look at. Yeah, the as, is, so. I think I think I think as I think as I say is the approach. Rate. I think if mm -hmm. we engage them as a as a as a group to say, hey, Jamaica want this system and this is how we want it. I don't see how we can create a, a, our own modeler. Ask somebody to create the software for us. That's what the need system was about. It was, you know, giving these animals a passport. We manage our data here, but probably some outsourcing take place to kind of manage the database for us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the approach to the model that we want to use. But I think it's really the way forward. It is the way forward to. Yeah, I know it's the way. Yeah, it's the way you know what I mean? It is the way forward. It's just a matter of. All right, is it is is it affordable for your operation? You know what I mean? Yeah. How yeah, do you how do you for that cost? Is it gonna raise your overhead too much that you're you can't make a profit, or do you have enough numbers to cover that cost? To cover that cost. Enough animals it's, to make you know, it work. I think security security mm -hmm. overall for anybody is probably any business right now is, is very expensive. Um, yeah, but if you're running a business, we have to find a way, you know. That's, yeah, that's um, I'm hoping that there's some form of, you know, whether because I know back to the minister, the minister mentioned that also in his um, in his presentation about as in traceability, traceability is key. As in, if we don't become traceable, yeah. guys, we can't export. We can't be able to export our meat, even export probably genetics. Mm -hmm. So. It's just an investment we have to look into if we plan to drive this sector in the right direction. So and it yeah. might be very expensive now, but you know, if we really plan to take this thing to our next level, we have to up our game. Our probably, our probably the private sector might be able to absorb a cost like that with you know without without, you know, with, with if they if they're planning to go into the whole you know vertical integration of the goat industry, you know, they might be one to say, hey, we can give you the tax, you know. And or, if the ministry, or if the ministry, or the ministry subsidizing a system, guys, you know, subsidizing a system that yeah. they say, yo, you can, this is the system we're going to use. Yeah, and, national system with yeah. public health and VSD, you know, we have to think about it. As I said, there's many ways to skin a cat. So we have to think, we have to just, we want to push them in that direction from now. So we don't wait until it later on and say, well, we can't get to meet the key man because we don't have a traceability system. Let us just hash out what we need from now and start putting all of them in place and grow each stage when we can. Yeah, you know? I agree with you. Any other question, guys? Um, because we're running up on almost two hours. Boy, I call you that, you think, shot virgin. Like, you can definitely, you can talk. You know how to present yourself. I told we can talk, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other questions, uh, folks? Because, you know, I don't want to keep him all night. Cause, uh, I don't know if it's tonight because it's being night. Um, I guess there's no other questions. So we can let Khalil go. All right. Um, thanks for having me. Um, great discussions. Hey, good you're night. welcome. Coming it is, it is yeah. you know, a Maybe good night. Good. It's a great <laughs> night. And the fact that we, we actually had... The minister on for a short period then you know we know it's worth it's worth doing this every night because you never know if you're persistent you will get what you need get you will get it done you know what i mean and we you know i've been trying to get the minister to pop in you know he secretly watches the show sometimes and we spot him i know blew up him spot but tonight he decided he's gonna jump in and he promises he will come and give us a full session. So we appreciate that. And we thank you all for making this, or you know, we call it um, Saturday night thing. What is that, Kalia? Oh, no. It, it was a picture or something I wanted to show you, but it's fine. Go, man. I give you the full screen. You can show it. No, no it won't show. I it saw it, show. so it will show. Oh, no, man. It won't show again. It's fine. Okay. Um, so for sure, I want to thank you all and big up the regulars. Everybody, there's a lot of regulars now. So everybody, thank you all for showing up every evening, every Saturday evening. 
and um, we will see you guys next week, same time, same place, and uh, we'll try to get, as usual, get into some real discussion. We have a guest or we don't have a guest, we're going to get into some good information. You know what I mean? And thank you again, Khalil. No problem. Thank you, Minister Floyd Green, and look forward to having you on a whole show, sir. And thank you for your great presentation this week. We know that you got some good things in store for us if we can just come together and execute it. All right? Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.